so uh foliar feeding yeah foliar feeding so the number like spray ph yeah you can get it in the fives how do you lower ph um i mean acidifiers acidifiers um uh AMS. Citric acid. There you go. Citric acid, yep. AMS. Um, yep. Just vinegar. be careful with the AMS part. Yes. Because that sulfur um, will provide a salt. Mm-hmm. So just don't do not overdo it. I would actually probably go the acidifier route. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're just slightly changing it with small amounts, AMS is a very cost-effective way to yes. do it. Especially burned. Even yeah. in burn downs, you know. there's Man, there's so many water conditioners out there anymore. Yeah. Holy cow. Yes. Um, anyway, I like using acidic folic works yeah. well. Yeah. But um, so you've got your change your water pH. Uh, water hardness is a big thing. I'm I'm going to put an RO system in. That's my yeah. plan. Uh, you talk to guys who are proficient in foliar feeding and very successful at it. They will tell you it's a waste of time if you're not doing it with RO water. Yep. Now, is it completely necessary? No. I've um, seen results without it, but also we don't have that hard of water. So, right, I have very hard water, very yeah. hard water. Yeah. Um. So yeah, get a water test done. It's not that bad. I had one done. I sent it to uh, Regen. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if that was twenty, thirty, forty bucks. I don't. Even it was fifty. It tells told me a lot. Yep. Um. Water test temperature, not spring when it's over. I I try not to go when it's over eighty five. That's a great. Yep, Great sub 85 degrees. Um, you want that plant uh, actively re- respira- res- respirating? Yep. Is that the way to put that? Long, so, long not, story short, you want it in times of non-stress. Yeah. In the so, heat of the day, that plant shutting down. Yep. It's closing its stomatas up. Yep. It's not going to be absorbing. It's trying. To, it's doing exactly what you want to do in the heat of the day. Not be out in it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, um, see, temperature... Uh, I mean, we're both huge proponents of fulvic acid, getting well, nutrients and in I might, the plant. I might go down a rabbit hole with that. Yes. Um, so, like, the fulvic acid. Oh, I'm not out. Um, Game on. One thing I like about it, okay, so we think about what type of ions. We got cations and anions, positives and negatives, okay? Uh, the leaf surface is a negative. Okay. Okay, a lot of the nutrients that we're putting on the plant more times are a positive, Okay you would say, well, it should attract, right? And it would just bind there. Well, there, there actually can be times where it gets over-complexed. Like okay. it's not able to get absorbed as fastly as it could. So adding a carbon source, okay, I would prefer fulvic for its the chelation abilities and to help get it through that plant membrane, but it helps make that charge neutral. Mm. And it turns out water is neutral. Neutral. So I, it is able to penetrate through that plant membrane yep. smoother. Um, so I like fulvic there. I like sugar um, if possible. I understand if you're doing a lower rate, um, you got to be careful. But having a little bit of sugar does help with um, feeding the phylosphere or the biology on the leaf. So you are getting a jump there. But then also you're going to help the plant, you know, intentionally or raise the bricks, which we'll talk about that. Um, and I think that's probably, we talk about bricks, uh, or people talk about bricks and a lot of ways they do it is through foliar feeding. Uh, That's how they, how they increase it. So maybe a natural segue, uh, to talk more about that here in a bit. But I think the last point of foliar feeding that I get to is just know that if your soil doesn't have the fertility below it, and you try to foliar feed, you can make that plant thinks it has to go harder than it. It doesn't have the fertility to support it. Yeah. Now, with that being in mind, so pretty much NPK, we got to make sure our levels levels are good. Okay. Um, calcium, magnesium. Calcium works way better through the roots than it will mm. through a foliar feed. Um, and sulfur, I would prefer not to do. I'll, I'll do a little bit foliar. But I'd prefer that more for the Y drops, NCs, or not NCs. You're like more of a fan of like borons. Yes, your micros. Your micros. So I think of my secondary nutrients, micros. Micros, I know I can elevate levels. Sure. 
And that's do foliar so many feed. people think that uh, foliar feeding you can actually you can put pounds into a plant, and I, maybe I don't know, maybe a guy can, but the number, the amount of gallons and applications. I mean, you think about it to put you know thirty pounds of foss down with ten thirty four o. Just say ten thirty four o. I want to say. Why am I looking at Kirk? He doesn't know. Yeah. Um, uh, is it three pounds per gallon of FOSS in 1034O? Pretty close. I think it's a little north of that. Yeah. Say it, let's, four, four or five. Say if it's five, so you need six gallons to six gallons of 1034O. Yeah, and I think you were closer around the three. I yeah, I, I would say yeah, it's three like, something. Because yeah. yeah. um, I want to say, say 30 pounds, and I mean, Google it. And long, long story short. You, you got to put pound. a lot of gallons out there yep. to get pounds. Yep. You know, people think that, you know, a pound of product or, you know, a gallon. I mean, I have talked to numerous people who thought that a gallon of, um, I'll just keep using 1034O, you know, has 34 pounds of FOSS in it. And there are some people that are dying laughing right now, but... If you ask most farmers how many pounds of FOSS are in a gallon of 1034 L, I bet most couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just run five gallons or whatever. Yep. Okay, how much FOSS is in that? You know, do some do some basic Google searches. Yeah. What's, you know, I ran 318.18 this year and some 945.15. And I just knowing, hey, what are we going for? We're going for, you made a great, you made a great point on this. I think it was at Field Day last year. In a foliar program, and the macros, you're giving a prescription to this plant. Yep. Saying, go get this. Yep. In these ratios. Yep. Um, well, and, and, and how it does it is if that, quote unquote, tasted good to it. Mm. It's telling them, okay, I need to go find more of that. Sure. So. For it a FOSS heavy time. Yeah. Or a K heavy time. Yes. Yep. And, and that's one thing, like, I, I don't want the misconception here that only do micros with the foliar. Right. No. NP and K in a foliar, not at large amounts, but some of it just helps that process of that plant start cooking more. Yep. Um, so if that's a low salt fertilizer, if it's 945.15, I mean, right. triple 20, whatever it is, having a little bit of NP and K is important. Yep. Um, and another thing too with those micros, a lot of times what I've seen my best success rates, period, best success rates, has been amino acid chelation and or a carbon chelation. Yep. Um, diving into more of, you know, taking like a zinc sulfate and chelating it myself uh, to see if we can bring price points down um, and have the same effectiveness that I've seen with the carbon chelation products that are on the market. Sure. So, Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.